Reverend Overton, how do you go about raising funds for this model for youth ministry? I know it requires a fair bit of startup in particular, and if you're going to pay folks a, a good wage, you know, how, do you, how does all this work, financially speaking? Yeah, uh, financially speaking, part of it works because I am paid by a church. So it's not like I'm doing true yoked ministry, but I do think it's possible to do the kind of things that we're doing you know, if you were halftime at a church and halftime wanted to build your own business that had a ministry goal in mind, I do think that's possible. I think we've proven that it's possible, though difficult. Um, for me, I built my model at a time when my church was in a capital campaign, and so I didn't have a lot of resources to go with. But scarcity always fuels ingenuity. So, so never think that you, by having an abundance of something like economics would tell you that that's true. So for me, because I was like, dude, I cannot go ask my church for money right now. And I probably could have, I just, I don't like asking for money. I hate it. I never went and did mission work as a college student with my on-campus ministry, because I was like, I'm not going to go raise support. That's terrifying. Mm -hmm. So I figured out how to do it another way. So for me, what I did was I discovered, oh, there's some denominational resources that I had at my disposal. I used some of my own money. Um, I realized once the idea was compelling enough, people just started writing some checks. But at the base of all of that model for me was um, the, the, the simple fact that I was like, well, if I create a model that generates its own revenue by creating something that's of value economically, People will consume it, and therefore, there will be a revenue stream that can sustain the ministry. So you mow lawns really well or care for people's yards, you can create a revenue stream that produces some ministry rocket fuel, let's call it that. Um, weightlifting, we charge lower than market value, but there's enough margin there to pull off what we need to do. So my my org has a this year a three... $327,000 budget, only uh, 30, 32, 42, 47,000 of that comes from donations or grants. Wow. So, and, and the profit, which we estimate from like the landscaping company this year, at least the net, whatever revenue will be 25,000 that will get reinvested back in it all. So I think about, I, I have a little model that I created. That's like several rings of what I call the, uh, the church economy. And for 1700 years, we've been in what I'd call the, the Christendom ring in which either the empire or in our world, people's sense of personal obligation to give to a church community, which is still very high in the United States, remarkably, um, th that that's where we've lived in. Sl the next ring beyond that, that few of us have thought about in the church is the grants world. And there's tons of grants out there. And you could create all sorts of models, secular or religious, where you could get access to billions of dollars of grants. Beyond that is what I call passion dollars. When you start laying down your blood, sweat, and tears, and I have a compelling idea that lives the gospel out, people will be like, I'll sacrifice for that. I'll join you in your gamble because I'm impressed. And this works. I like this. This is a lot of my people know how the gospel should look. And when they see a model in which like that's the gospel, they will give to it way more than you think. You have way more untapped capacities than you realize. So that's the passion circle. People willing to lay down for something and lay out. Beyond that is what I call the wallet economy. The trillions of dollars of transactions that go on every week in our world. And if we could build models where you tap into people's back pocket wallet for a cup of coffee, a lawn mow, uh, getting their phones set up with electronics, like weightlifting, like you could think of a gazillion ideas to tap into the wallet economy and actually disrupt those marketplaces with a business that does good. Yeah. It's possible to do that. People stick with our business, our landscaping business, because if they know it's about more than just a transactional transaction, there's a relational care component that's caught up in this business that's different. Not all of them understand that, but a good portion of our customers do. That changes our whole relationship. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. So there's these different rings that allow you, and all of these can create revenue streams, not for their own sake, but for the sake of doing good kingdom-based work. 
And a lot of them require a certain amount of efficiency and excellence, which I think produces better ministry overall.